to take a first look at the Defiant Shuttle Pilot Payload from the G.I. Joe FSS 8.0 shipment number 5. We're almost at the end here of the FSS 8.0. One more shipment to go, and then that's it, folks. So, Payload. Now, admittedly, this is the figure that I wanted the most out of the entire FSS. It's been Payload the entire time. Um, big space nerd. Some people argue that, you know, G. I. does G.I. Joe belong in space? The answer is G.I. Joe belongs wherever you want it to belong. It was a 12-year run spanning several childhoods for several people in different eras. So G.I. Joe fits in nicely to wherever you need it to fit into. So there's my definitive opinion on that. You put G.I. Joe wherever you want. For me, yep, they go to space. And the man leading them into space, it's payload. So let's just deal with the elephant in the room. Or emu, it's not quite an elephant. It is the, uh, the Data Viper comparisons. Yes, it's basically almost, it's different. They have different boots and a different head. But yeah, it's the Data Viper. Um, reusing of parts, it it bothers me sometimes. Other times, if it makes sense, then it doesn't bother me. In this case, it makes sense. I, I feel like this, you know, is certainly something that the parts could have been used properly on, on either of them for. What bothers me more is, is the reuse of certain head sculpts over and over again. That That gets to me, but... For this, where both figures are, you know, needing to have a specific look or wanting to have a specific look to portray the characters, then, you know, it makes sense. Um, you can look at these and maybe if you don't have a trained eye, like if you were going to give show this to somebody who doesn't collect G.I. Joe, maybe they wouldn't immediately know that it's the same one. Obviously, us as collectors, we see these repeatedly over and over and over again, so you get pretty skilled at, at picking out the parts. So... That doesn't bother me. In fact, it gives me an idea to use the Data Vipers as possibly, um, you know, the rest of the G.I. Joe space team. If this is going to be the look that they go with, then, well, I'll just throw some paint on these and make, a, you know, my own Star Brigade because we never got those in the uh, in the modern series. And I think that probably makes more sense than having these as um, Data Vipers. I really understand they're supposed to be reconnaissance and whatnot, but I I don't know. I don't know how to portray that in, in my... Uh, action figure photography and whatnot so doesn't bother me um it is again it's the same thing except the boots and head but uh that's okay because i think this was a good a good figure itself when it came out uh not without flaw of course but we'll get into those because the flaws on this one are persistent on that one and at least in the case of my figure they are um even more so so i'll get to that in just a second let's move the data viper out of here so starting off with just the figure, and I wanted to focus on the figure because I think that the, the in, uh, likelihood is people are going to focus on the accessories too much. And I didn't buy him or want him for the accessories. I wanted him for this. And off the bat, I love the colors. The white and the orange look great. I love the orange that they chose. Very, very reminiscent of, you know, the space shuttle um, pilots, astronauts. The orange that you usually see when you watch the NASA movies and stuff like that. So I like that. Um, the head sculpt is not a, a reused head sculpt, at least not repeatedly. Um, it looks a little bit like Footloose, but it is not one that I have seen several times. So therefore, it's not something that I um, would have a problem with. Uh, the pockets are all done. This American flag came out beautifully on the side here. Let me see if I can get you a, a look at that, hopefully. I'll upgrade my camera, I promise. Here, I'll put that there. There you go. That, that looks that looks great. That really looks nice. And then again, the rest of the orange and the white looks um, looks really good on here. Uh, so from a, a perspective of looking at it from the eye, it looks it looks beautiful. It really does. And let's not forget hard top. Putting these two together again, that is a nice fit. That kind of powder blue and white with that orange and white. Hang on a second. Is that, oh, that's red. I thought maybe they had put that in there for a match. But yeah, these two working together again in the modern form. Very nice. All right, let's move that aside. So looking at the articulation, before we, we get too far, let's go ahead and point out that neck. Yes, he's got a elongated neck, probably so his helmet would fit properly the way they wanted it to inside of his equipment. Um, there's another figure that has this exact same body, different boots, of course. And let me see if I'll do a little back to back just so you can see the height difference between the two. So you've got uh, Payload there, and we've got Skydive here. 
Now, aside from the boots, which admittedly the boots on payload are slightly taller, but this neck gives him quite a bit more height. I don't know if you guys can see that properly there. Yeah, so there's definitely a, a height difference between the two. Um, and that comes from that neck and possibly the head. The head looks like it's a little taller as well. But um, And then this, of course, is the same suit that he's wearing, but just in blue for, for skydive. All right, so with that articulation, his head, of course, goes all the way around. Giant neck, arms have good poseability. Um, he does have that wrist joint that I love very much so, which is necessary, especially for the equipment they gave him. He's going to need to be able to bend his wrists in all kinds of awkward ways. All right, putting him down. He's got a belt here. Um, the uh, pads, pockets here are painted in orange. Double knee joint. That's on both sides. And he has the ankle joint. Nothing, no swivel on side to side. That's okay, though. It does go around in a circle. And then he has these, these boots here, which we've seen on Iron Grenadier. And most recently on Fast Draw. So they are just kind of standard boots, but have a little bit of a metal look toward the bottom of them, which I think is probably appropriate for space boots, if that's the look you're going for. And uh, the silver, it looks nice. This is a very, very nice looking figure. I, I like that a lot. Um, and that, again, I want to focus on that because there's probably going to be some complaints with the accessories, but I wanted to get to the figure first because I like the figure. I like the look of it. Uh, I'm not bothered that it's reused parts. This neck part bothers me. I wish they could have done something differently, but I assume that's for a reason so he fits inside of all of his equipment. And speaking of his equipment, let's go ahead and move payload off to the side. Let's have a look at that. So here we go. Now this is done to probably look like the jetpack that he had when he was released with the Defiant. And this is probably the only tools that the uh, club had available that resembled it. So they went ahead with it. Um, and uh, you know, if you're not too much of a stickler for you know reality and, and whatnot, then this will work fine, it's, it's okay. And what this does is it just goes on over top of him. He sl slides right in there. And then it just sits here. It doesn't clip in, it doesn't snap on. It just kind of sits there. And that's all it does. So you need to put the helmet on in order for it to stay on. And the helmet is this helmet, which we see on many of the pilots and paratroopers. And it's white and it's got an orange kind of plastic over top, which looks pretty cool. And then it just pops over his gigantic head like that. And then as you see the parts start falling off, that is going to, that's going to happen. So just be aware of that. If you get this figure, um, do so knowing that the parts are going to fall off as you try to set it up. Now that was the easy part of setting this figure up. The hard part now comes with the smaller accessories that go on his forearms. So right here, just looking at him as a, in, in a pose, that looks pretty cool. That looks pretty cool. I like that look. That is a good look. My opinion anyway, I, I like that. Now these things do move. Um, they move so much they pop right off, but they do kind of go from side to side. There is a little bit of up and down motion on them. And again, that's on that side as well. Like I said, these will pop out frequently. That was common on the Data Viper as well, but I feel like it's a little more common on this figure. So I'm gonna back payload up here for just a second. And here's what you got. You've got these wrist guards here with the controls for his jetpack. I'm just gonna call it a jetpack, rocket pack. You guys know what I'm talking about. So these are the controls for him. And then there, there are these hoses that connect to this piece right here, which pops off. These hoses do not go snugly into either of those things. They will pop off frequently. So what you do is you take these right here and the handle, it fits through right there. Okay, and it leaves a little bit of a peg coming out the top. And then it's that peg's job to clip into this hole right here. That's the wrong one. Let me get this one here to fit in like that. So once that happens, now you have a very, very loose connection and that just pops right off. Again, when I say it pops right off, it pops right off. It will fall right off. The hose will fall off too. But there, there you go. Maybe if you guys have ordered one, it's possible that yours will not do this, but mine sure does. 
and then there you go. So it's connected right there, but you can see it is so easily going to fall off. Even if I just turn it upside down, it could pop right off. And this is supposed to go into his hand. This one's on the left side. Probably the easiest way is to just kind of slide his hand into here and then have him, um, you can take this apart and have him kind of grasp the, the handle that way. I'm not going to do that for time purposes, but that's probably the, the most common and the easiest way to do it. Pop these on and then this is the look that you get. From this angle here, there you go. That's the look you got there. And then, yeah, it's gonna fall off. I, I, Sorry guys, I would love to show it to you without it falling off, but I don't think that we're going to get that opportunity. Especially because I gotta do one more side and at this point everything's gonna start toppling over. So I'm just gonna stand up payload there, grab the other one. Here are the other pieces. And the same thing applies on this side. Take the hoses, connect them, and then you just connect these pieces together like that. This one has a slightly better connection than the one other one. And uh, again, if you have the Data Viper, the connection on these is tighter than it is on this one. It's by no means secure. If you move it, it'll still fall. But it is better than the ones that are on this. That might just be uh, something with my figure. Who knows? If you have one, please go ahead and in the comment section, let me know if this is a problem you've got with yours as well. I would love people watching to be able to see if this is something that is going to be expected for all of them or maybe just some of them. So all said and done, here is what payload looks like. All right, there is payload. And that is an excellent looking figure. Not too sturdy. There you go. See, so it, it falls over and then parts just start coming off. Um, you got to understand that that's going to be something that happens on this one. I'm, I'll repeat it again and again. Unless you're gonna, the kind that's gonna start gluing these, if you're a loose collector, you gotta understand that's probably gonna pop off. I know there's gonna be people who are upset that they did this, that this is the version that they gave us, but my response to that is they could have given us this. They could have put Payload's head in there and been like, here's your spaceman. So maybe, maybe, maybe we should be happy with what we got. Uh, even if you don't like the jetpack, you can probably do some stuff to it um, or find other parts. I mean, Marauders has got a lot of stuff out there. You can maybe fashion yourself a, a better rocket pack if you'd like. But, you know, personally, maybe I, I would have done a couple different things. Um, the vest, kind of like Ace style here. Maybe this in kind of a white and orange would have also worked. You know, you could have used the same legs, but maybe the torso and... And this in, in white and orange probably would have worked for me. But again, they could have always given us this. So I'm going to maybe not complain so much. All right, so here's a look at payload from the front. And here is the back of the figure. Again, I, I like the I like the look. It looks it looks good. It's a great display figure, especially if you keep them in the package. Um, it's gonna look fantastic and part of the reason for that is and let me just push payload off to the side here is because of this let me expand it a little bit so you guys can see the whole thing this card art is fantastic it looks absolutely awesome I, I really and you know like the fact that they set it in space right so we get a tiny bit of a you know orange haze behind him suggesting maybe there's a sun or some type of explosion behind him but not the full gi joe explosion and it's in space it just it's a it's a nice compliment i don't know if it's just the colors the white and the black the orange it really looks good this is this is one that i found myself staring at repeatedly it's a very very well done file card um to the artist designer who did this my compliments it looks great you did an awesome job let's pop this around here here is the file card for payload Please feel free to pause this and read it if you are interested. So there is payload. Okay, so overall, I like the figure. Um, I did record yesterday, but I, I spent too much time talking about the accessories and um, I didn't feel like that was what I wanted to accomplish. Um, because it's about the figure, not about the pack he's with, at least for me. 
I know some people are, are upset about it and that's fine but for me it's about the um, the figure and the figure while yes you could probably easily customize this yourself if you don't want to pay the price for this one and this one is probably going to start fetching a decent price um, but I, I like it I like the paint I like the color scheme I like the fact that we have payload now so um, I, I give it a thumbs up the accessories meh, not super excited about them but um, I feel like I would rather have a decent figure and accessories I can figure out later as opposed to a terrible figure that came with good accessories so that is my take on payload thank you guys so much for watching I really really appreciate it um, and until next time yo Joe